Hi, welcome to my monthly market report. We are going to be talking about a lot of different topics today, but I want to say thank you. I appreciate you coming here. I know market reports aren't the, always the most exciting thing, but I sure appreciate your time. I am Julie Patterson, and I am the broker owner of Gateway Properties. We are a boutique real estate brokerage in Loomis, California, which is a suburb of Sacramento. And I've been in the real estate industry for over 20 years, and I actually hold a degree in economics. In fact, four people on my team, four of the girls on my team actually also share um, a love for economics and have economics degrees. So if you're interested about hearing what's happening in the housing market, you have absolutely come to the right place. We're going to be talking about several key topics, including what is on everyone's mind right now, interest rates. So rates have certainly defined 2022, and we're going to chat a bit about what's going on. We're going to talk about some of the real estate headlines and what we can kind of expect to happen this year. So I think this picture is really, really appropriate. It is a roller coaster. And you can tell these folks are on a loop here, but are they going forwards or are they going backwards? They're upside down and they just don't even know. That, that's kind of how they're feeling. They don't even know what's happening. So the first topic that we have is what the heck is happening with the interest rates? So a couple of quick facts. We have never been in a year where the interest rates, the average 30 year fix has doubled in one year. And in 2022, we experienced the fastest rise in mortgage rates since they started tracking them over 50 years ago. So it's safe to say that 2022 was an anomaly in a lot of ways. Here is a quote from Lawrence Young. He is the chief economist at NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors. And it says, a return to a normal spread between the government borrowing rate and the home purchasing borrowing rate will bring the 30-year fixed mortgage down to around 6%. So as I'm recording this, the average 30-year fix is sitting a little under 6.5%, and we have seen a bit of relief recently, but what Lawrence is referring to is the 10-year treasury yield, which is the government borrowing rate, and then the 30-year fixed rate. So basically the relationship between the two and the spread that we see. This image kind of describes what he's saying. If you remember, for almost 50 years, the 30-year fixed rate has moved in unison with the 10-year treasury yield. So if you want to know where mortgage rates are heading, you watch the 10-year treasury yield and the spread between them. So you see in the middle of the screen or kind of here on the, on the, on the side, it says that the average spread has been about 1.7%. And in mortgage chalk, that is 170 basis points. So literally, if you take the 10-year treasury and you add 1.7% to it, you would get about the 30-year mortgage rate. And that's kind of been the range there. The spread has been 1.7%. But then the rates just shot up and it created this market that experts and forecasters have never seen before. And a market that's doubled and had the fastest move in the last 50 years. It was just, it was kind of bananas. But if you look at the 10 year treasury, and so let's take a look at it from December 1st all the way back to the beginning of the year. And what do we see? We just saw it rise up. That was the trajectory. It did go up and down a bit, but the, the trend has definitely been in an upward trajectory. So let's talk a little bit more about what Lawrence Yun mentioned. He said, a return to a normal spread. Now that the spread's been the 10-year treasury and the 30-year fixed rate, that's what he's talking about again. And I wanna break that down and maybe show you a little bit like an a, example of what that means. So I'll use this graphic right here and pose the question, so why are rates at not 5.5% then? So if we look in the box to the left, if you were to go back to 2000 and look between 2000 and 2021, the average 10-year treasury, the spread was 1.7. So uh, in, the, in the bottom pink box, you see at 3.49, and in the yellow box, the 1.79, that gives you the mortgage rate of 5.28. That would be the average rate between 2000 and 2021. So where are we at today? Well, in the middle box where I mentioned we're right below 6.49 on the 30-year fixed. So with a 10-year treasury at 3.5 and a spread of 2.99 gives us that 6.49. Now, if the spread were at a normal rate and we were in, the, in, a, in a range, let's say, I don't know, 3.7, then on this third box, we would have the spread of the treasury yield like we've had historically. We would likely be landing in rates around 5.5% for the 30-year fixed. So why is the spread so much higher now than it's been historically? Well, for one, market volatility. It's no doubt driving up rates higher. And the investors that determine these rates know that everybody that's buying right now is likely going to refinance these mortgages. So they're charging a premium for them. Most experts will agree that mortgage rates will come down. It's just a matter of time. So as we get inflation under control and the Fed continues to 
work. I, right now, I don't think we're out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination, but what are the experts saying about what's gonna happen in 2023? So let me give you a couple perspectives on that. Ali Wolf says, the housing market is expected to face continued uncertainty heading into 2023, as consumers, financial markets, and policymakers work through their respective challenges in today's economy. So no doubt we're running into an uncertain market and there's a lot of volatility and questions about the economy, about geopolitical events, the war in Ukraine, all of those things are causing uncertainty in our markets. So as we move into this year, we want to see some of these items get eliminated. We wanna see inflation get under control and we do still have some more work to get there. If we take Barry Habib's perspective from the MBS highway, because we see a slowdown and we see the inflation comparison start to become more and more favorable, you'll start to see that inflation number move lower, lower, and lower. As a result, mortgage rates should move similarly, move similarly on a downward trajectory, probably giving us around 5 or below 5% in the next six months. Well, let's see if Barry's right about that, but no doubt as the market becomes more certain going into the next year, we should expect to see the interest rates go down. Now, I don't think we're going to see anything in the threes or the fours and probably likely in the high fives and low sixes, but no doubt we're going to see more of that. And we should expect for interest rates to get a little bit of relief. So Barry is usually pretty on, on point for his, um, his projection. So I think the amazing thing about is if you turn on the news and you're watching on social media, you don't see that type of information in the news. Most of the housing market information is doom and gloom. And here's going to be my message on that. Don't trust the headlines without proper context. There are so many headlines flying around and they're saying things and giving you information. And the information doesn't always represent the truth. The news can really spin the narrative. So I'll give you an example on this. Diana Olick published this tweet. Homeowners have lost $1.5 trillion in equity since May as home prices have dropped. So this is coming from a Black Knight study. So factually, it's an accurate headline there. But what we want to do is we want to be able to put this into perspective. And if somebody sees that, they might think, oh my gosh, the housing market sounds like it's about to tank. Like I'm, I'm nervous and I don't want to get in the market. But that drop in equity put into perspective looks like this. There has been this huge surge of tappable tap equity in this country. And tappable equity is and up until you get to 80% loan to value or 80% LTV that last 20% doesn't even count in this scenario. So what do you see? This run up of 2020 and 2021, and even into the early parts of 2022, it just gives you a perspective that even visually right here, you can see is nowhere, we're, nowhere near where we were back in 2008 um, and the dip down during that time. So it's always important to take a headline like that and to put it into perspective. So First American is saying this, Homeowners have very high levels of tappable home equity today, providing a cushion to withstand potential price declines, but also preventing housing distress from turning into foreclosure. This result will likely be more of a foreclosure trickle than a tsunami. So thankfully, we're seeing that here locally, and we're seeing that on a lot of other places. And you know what people are saying? That the level of equity that homeowners have today is providing them with options if they were to have to do something. So if they were to have to sell, it is going to, they have the ability to do so. So it really limits the amount of people going into foreclosure. So I'm gonna talk about foreclosures in just a minute because I think the idea of debt is a topic that many of us are wondering about as we enter into 2023. And with inflation bearing down on everyone's soul, we kind of wanna feel, unpack a little bit about what that's going to, going to look like and how that's going to turn out. So if you look at the headlines, I'll give you an example of CNBC article right here. Household debt soars in the fastest pace in 15 years as credit card usage surges, the report said. So this article from the New York Fed was a quick run up about household debt, credit card usage and that sort of thing. And if you think about household debt, it's talking about credit cards, but then it might people think it might lead to delinquencies and things like mortgages. So let's unpack that a bit. If we go back again, but putting this into perspective, credit card balances are near their 2019 levels. So if you think about where we were in the world in 2019 and going into 2020, into the pandemic that we're now still coming out of, what do we know happened? It's pretty explainable if you think about it. During the pandemic, stimulus money, loans were given to people. We know that savings rates really jumped actually during the pandemic and people weren't using their credit cards as much. 
So now that we've kind of worked through that, people are starting to borrow again and starting to use their credit cards. So we want to stay on top of this and continue to monitor it, but it's not exactly accurate when you just think, oh, where are we at with credit card debt? We're in this horrendous, you know, upswing. So it's important to think of the perspective. So let's start with delinquencies because that's obviously the leading indicator of any foreclosure is something that would go delinquent. So MBA Marina Walsh, an industry, anal an, an industry analysis says, for the second quarter in a row, the mortgage delinquency rate fell to its lowest level since the MBA survey began in 1979, declined to 3.45%. Foreclosure starts and loans and process foreclosure have also dropped in the third quarter to levels further below their historical averages. So here's what I'm here to say. The reality in delinquencies is that they're lower than they've been in a long, long time. And you can go check out this article and read that if you'd like. So I'm not saying there aren't gonna be people that are affected by a slowdown of the economy. There very much will be. But homeowners have options today. They can sell their home, they can pay a commission and pay a little bit of, and get a little bit of money in their pocket and move on to the other side of their financial crisis they're facing. And I think that's a really important factor when comparing it to the previous, um, the previous downturn that we've had. So if we look, even if we look back and think about foreclosures, foreclosures were up at the end of last year. Yes, they were, but they are still near record lows. So as of third quarter of last year, there were 88,000 foreclosures in this country. And to put that number into perspective, in 2019, there were 278,000 foreclosures in this country. So we're nowhere near where we were heading into the pandemic. And that's a critically, critically important fact. Headlines have a way of doing more to terrify than to clarify of what's actually going on. And relative to consumer debt, mortgage debt, this are really things that are happening in the world. And it's our job as advisors to be the most knowledgeable that we can on these topics, because that's the that's what the clients need to know. And we need to be able to have that information to be able to serve the clients that we have here locally. We want to help educate our clients so they're able to make a wise and competent decision about what's happening in the market. So let's take a look about the 2023 housing market forecast. There is no doubt that we're going, there's going to be questions that come up over what's really going on and what's this year going to hold. And we're here to kind of unpack that for you. So as we start to talk about the housing market forecast for 2023, the best place to start is what we saw in 2022. So I think that the housing market has been defined by two key things, inflation and rapidly rising mortgage rates. So now we're starting to see signs of inflation easing, and we know that the Federal Reserve is still making moves to lower inflation, and we're certainly not out of the woods yet, but where that lands is really going to impact what happens with the housing market this year. I think the housing market in 2023 is going to be defined by if the Fed can bring down the inflation and keep it there, and will we see stability in the market, especially when it comes to mortgage rates. So where I wanna to begin today is talking about mortgage rates, the home sale prices, and how all of these factors are starting to come together for 2023 and kind of what the experts are saying. I think we can actually begin with a quote from June of last year from our darling Jerome Powell, <laughs> the chair of the Federal Reserve. I think it really sets the stage for where the feds, what the feds are set out to do this year. And it says, I'd say if you were a home buyer, somebody or a young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. We need to get back to a place where supply and demand are back together and where inflation is down, is down low again and mortgage rates are low again. In June, this is exactly what the Fed was saying. We need a bit of a reset. We need to slow the economy and we need to get the housing market back into a place where it's a little bit more balanced. Because if you remember, it was completely unbalanced and wacko there for a while. So all of that is driven by inflation. We've watched the Federal Reserve make moves to try to lower inflation last year. And that work is still in progress. And we're certainly not out of the woods, but it's definitely had an impact on mortgage rates, which has had an impact on buyer activity, on inventory, and ultimately on our prices. It's really put the market back into a reset position. And there's so much more that needs to come in that space. It's really what has defined 2022. So let's talk about where 2023 is heading. And again, what the experts are saying. Um, I'd like to start again with mortgage rates. Um, I think we can all agree, as we mentioned, 2022 was defined by mortgage rates. And let's look at this, this Freddie Mac 30-year fixed all the way going back to January of last year. The big takeaway is that rapid rise that we saw. This has never happened before in a calendar year. Mortgage rates more than doubled last year, and we'd never seen that before. So it's less about the number that where we landed and more about the fact, you know, we, we landed over 7%. 
It's really more about the fact that the rapid rise caused so much uncertainty and confusion. And people in the market were saying, hey, I'm not ready to jump in. This is all out of whack. So that's had an impact on the balance of the housing market here in the Sacramento area. It's had it slowed our buyer demand and it slowed the pace of sales. And that's really what we've been looking at. As we start to think about what's ahead for this year, mortgage rates are really, really, really difficult to predict. It's really all about inflation and we're gonna to continue to watch inflation. And as, inf as inflation is high, mortgage rates tend to be high. And as we're starting to see signs of that potentially turning, we wanna know where mortgage rates are gonna go. What the experts are saying right now, if you look at Fannie, Freddie, MBA, NAR, and we average all those together, somewhere between six and six and a half percent is what's kind of expected. So starting out where we are right now and possibly ticking down if inflation starts to come down too, the reality is it's less about the number. Like I said a moment ago, it's more about looking a market looking for stability, looking for mortgage rates to level out. Now, whether that's somewhere between five and six and a half percent, the goal is for mortgage rates to stabilize. And we certainly aren't talking about record lows that we saw over the past two years, but we really shouldn't be talking about or expecting a rapid acceleration either. As inflation starts to turn, what we're going to be looking for is stability with the market and with rates. This is realistically what experts are saying right now. And I think this quote from Greg McBride at Bankrate really says it well. It says, mortgage rates could pull back meaningfully in the next year if inflation pressures eases. This is all about inflation, my friends. This is what we've been talking about last year and what we're going to be continue talking about in 2023. If they hike the federal funds rate up as aggressively as they have in the past, that's definitely going to have a different impact on mortgage rates. The reality of it is it may go up before they come back down. And it's not really a matter of if rates are going to come back down, though. It's really more a matter of when. And that's what we're going to be watching in response to inflation. Now, as we've seen inflation rise, we've seen the mortgage rates tick up. And that's, that definitely, like we said, has impacted home sales. So let's talk about what home sales looked like last year and what the projections are for 2023. The total home sales for 2022, you can see that pink bar right there. This is a combination of existing homes and new construction projected to, to end the year at around 5.8 million home sales. Now, coming off of 2021, that feels like a major slowdown. We sold roughly 6.9 million homes in 2021, and that is a significantly higher number than where we're at right now. And if you look back in time, you can see on this graph, it goes all the way back to 1999. We haven't seen 5.8 million in home sales in about 10 years or so. So this is definitely going to feel like a slowdown. And if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen a funny video that we did last summer about speeding down the highway. And I use that analogy all the time. 2021 and early 2022 felt like you were flying down the highway at an unsafe 100 miles an hour and things were moving really fast and it, it was just unsafe on all levels. As we came around the bend of summer of 2022, it's like we saw flashing lights and we pumped the brakes really hard. And while you're still moving forward, it felt slower than it really was. You were still cruising down, but coming off that high of 2020, 2021, and early 2022, this is a more normal market, but what we're experiencing feels a whole lot slower. So what is this year expected to look like? Well, our guess is probably right around 5.1 million in home sales. Um, it's going to, but it's going to feel slower than that because of what we came from. So we want to park here for a second and talk about the projection for 2023 and what experts are saying. So at 5.1 million home sales, which is less than 2022 and definitely less than 21, but here's the thing, experts tend to reproject throughout the year. And right now their projections are based on a lot of different things. Right now we're in place where inflation is high, mortgage rates are pretty high, and we're, we're still seeing buyer demand, but it's clearly not as high as it once was. Um, we do have more inventory on the market, but we're not seeing a huge influx of a lot of new listings here in Roseville and Sacramento areas. We're seeing new construction slowing a bit. New construction has standing inventory. There's things that are definitely impacting that. So the projections for next year are clearly lower at this point. But I think as we start to see the feds lowering and the lowering and keeping inflation down and getting it back under control with mortgage rates potentially coming down as well, we anticipate that this 5.1 million in home sales could start to tick up throughout the year. And it's just more as the activity, when the rates come down, the activity will likely kick back in. So we're going to continue to watch this forecast as we grow, as we go forward and bring you information as experts are saying it and as they reproject throughout the year, because we do see that quite a bit. 
if we look ahead at how how much if we look ahead at how some of the experts are breaking down total home sales for the next year in millions, anywhere from about four to five and a half million homes, we like to put that into context to the, and average them all together. It may look, you may look at this and say, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle there, maybe not on the high end and maybe not on the low end. So that's how we're coming up with this 5.1 million. And we're going to continue to watch that number. So the question really continues is when is that going to pick up? what's going to cause more transactions and what's going to reinvigorate that number come the coming year. I think this quote from Yorn Yun really, Lawrence Yun really says it well. He says the upcoming months should see a return of buyers as mortgage rates to appear to have already peaked and have been coming down since mid November. So as we start to see inflation, hopefully coming under control, mortgage rates responding, we're going to see more buyer activity. Buyers are looking for stability and predictability predictability in the market. And that starts as that starts to unfold, we definitely have a bumpy road ahead. So, but hear me out on that. As it starts to unfold, we'll see more buyers coming back into the market and that should start to increase the pace of sales as well. And as mortgage rates, if they've already peaked, we hope that that is right. We hope that what they're believing on that is right, but we're gonna continue to watch. And as we start to talk about 2023 home prices, that's the big thing on everybody's mind. So let's walk you through about what the experts are saying on that as well for their forecast for 2023. I think this graph really breaks down several of those leading experts and the forecast. We have some showing that some experts are saying home prices to appreciate a little bit next year. Some experts are saying price, home prices to come down a little bit next year. And this is a year over year appreciation for 2023 forecasted. So now again, context is key. We bring all of these together, we average them out, and if you look across the board, roughly neutral or flat home price appreciation for this year, it's kind of what's expected. So that's what happens when we pull them all together and look at the grander picture. The clarity and truth is gonna probably lie somewhere in the middle. That's where the average really comes from. And where we're coming off a point in time where we had some you know, crazy double digit year over year um, home price appreciation, we're certainly look, not looking at that to happen again and a repeat of that going forward, but we're not looking at these massive declines that some people are projecting as well. No one that of experts are really calling for a 10 or 20% home price depreciation. So that can give some people a little bit of solace. So as an ec economics nerd, I have to say, it all comes back down to supply and demand. The more buyers we have in the market, the more home prices will rise. That balance of more buyers than homes available is what tends to put that upward pressure on home prices. And right now we're sitting at, you know, that double double digit year over year a price appreciation. We've been looking, but we've also been looking at month over month home prices, and we have seen a little bit of a decline there. So that decline though, as months goes on, is getting a little bit smaller and smaller. So as we look at what to expect and what's in store for 2023, we're forecasting a fairly flat or neutral home price appreciation. We will have some areas that, that were more overheated than others and may experience a bit more movement and than other areas, but we're gonna continue to bring to you what's happening with supply and demand and all of the things that, home, that impact home sales for 2023. Um, here we have... We have this quote from Mark Fleming, and he, he is really talking about the, the, the demand that we're looking for. And it says, the housing market, once adjusted to the new normal of higher mortgage rates, will benefit from the continued strong demographic-driven demand relative to an overall long-run shortage of supply. So we still have this pretty, pretty decent-sized demand from the millenni millennials aging into the home buying age. And all of those factors are going to continue to put an upward pressure on home prices. So again, this really nods to the buyers looking for stability. And once the housing market has adjusted to this new normal and adjusted to the mortgage rates, potentially settling into a more stable range, we're gonna see more buyers coming back into the market and back into that buyer pool. And that's what's gonna really tip what we're feeling right now for 2023. I wanna end on this quote from Doug Duncan from Fannie Mae because I think it really says it well. It says, from our perspective, the good news is that demographics remain favorable for housing. So the demand that we see, there's still a demand for people that want to buy homes. And the sector appears well positioned to help lead the economy out of what we expect as a hopefully brief recession. I started in the beginning talking about this is all about inflation. And the more we start to hear about inflation coming under control and inflation coming down, it sparks the conversation about this recession. And the question becomes, what does that all mean for the housing market if we do see a brief recession? 
historically, it'll it'll tell us that mortgage rates are going to come down. And what happens as inflation lowers and mortgage rates come down, we likely see buyers coming back into the market. Definitely buyers have more options right now to choose from than they did previously. And that's a good thing for them. It's making them have a little of time to think. It's giving them options. Um, it's giving them that stability that they're yearning for. As we start to see all of that unfold, we shall see 2023 probably respond that way. So what's the overall takeaway here? It's really all about inflation. The market is looking for stability in 2023. We are looking for mortgage rates to stabilize and become more predictable. We're watching the economic drivers that surround us, and we're still seeing demographic demand that's going to drive up the housing market here in Placer County and beyond. Um, our, our region is particularly um, well positioned to get those higher priced markets transitioning and moving into a more affordable housing that we can provide here in the Sacramento, in the Sacramento Valley area. So I'm Julie Patterson. Again, I'm broker owner of Gateway Properties, and we are a boutique brokerage right here in Placer County in Loomis. And we are a suburb of Sacramento. And my team and I do deep dives on our local housing stats each week. Gateway Properties has four women with economics degrees, and we are passionate about our market knowledge and about positioning our clients in the market. We look at each micro market and break down what we're seeing in real time. So buying and selling a home, it's a really big deal. And our goal is to educate our clients about the market and what's happening and about the process of home buying and selling as well. So we have some incredible resources available with hyper relevant information that can enable you to make a powerful and confident decision when it comes time to buy or sell your home. So my team and I, we live here, we work here, and we absolutely love it here. And we want you to love where you live too. So you have questions about our community, about the market in general, or about a specific property, we love nothing more than to talk to you about it. We would love the opportunity to chat with you. Um, my contact number is below, so please feel free to reach out. And if you enjoyed this video, show me some love and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you, you will definitely catch the next one. So see you soon. Bye.